Hello, and welcome to the Orion Enterprise. Today, I'm going to be going over part two of my three video series where I'm talking about how to have the best league starter every league start. And in this part of the video series, I'm going to be talking about matching your farming strategy to your build and doing it in a way where you're taking your build characteristics and you're highlighting its strengths and hiding its weaknesses through the build you're playing. So how do you do this? Well, first you need to identify your build's characteristics. So for today, I'm going to start out here in a, with an example for a poison blade vortex uh, occultist. So this is one of the builds I showcased in my video yesterday. You should check that out if you haven't already. It's part one talking about how to pick a spread of league starter builds to prepare for league start. And this is one of the builds I show off. It's a Poison Blade Vortex Occultist. It's quite strong, as you can see, 5 mil DPS with uh, all things popping off, going up to nearly 7 on the Val Blade Vortexes. So a really solid starter. But how does this build actually play? What are its characteristics? Well, it's very good at clearing. It's And specifically clearing very dense and lower health enemies. So it has really high mobility with... <coughs> excuse me, Blade Vortex kind of applying damage as you're just running along. It has really insane clear, as I said, where you can clear up a ton of really dense enemies if they're not too tanky, and it has chain explosions with the Curse on Hit Ring, Profane Bloom, and Poison from Global Poison Chance all applying at once. So this really allows it to be a great speed mapper, but with really high AoE, but where does this build weak? It's weak against really juiced enemies, so like really strong rare monsters or really tough uber bosses or anything with anti-melee mechanics, this build would struggle with. So with all that in mind, let's come up with a tree that matches those characteristics. So for this, I've gone with a really basic because this tree is now out of date as there's going to be atlas gates, which is going to change up how you can do pathways. But as an example here, I've got incursion as well as Delirium, with the idea being that in Incursion, there's magic monsters primarily from, where is it here, this node, where you're going to have a really dense room with mostly magic monsters. So your Profane Bloom uh, chain reactions from Corpse Explosions can really just proliferate like crazy and just basically blow up the whole instance as soon as you kill a magic monster. On top of that, we've got Delirium to juice up these areas, and because it adds a lot of extra monsters to a map, meaning that that, again, enables our corpse proliferation chain explosions to deal a lot of damage and clear out areas really quickly. On top of that, I think Delirium is going to be really good next league because a lot of people are going to be needing small mana reservation cluster jewels to make their builds work, and that's going to be a great area to get money by farming those bases or just by kind of farming Delirium in general. So that's an example of picking characteristics or farming strategies or atlas mechanics that match with a build. So this is an example of a really fast mapper and kind of picking a tree. What if we wanted to go the other way? So next up here, I'm going to pull up what I am very likely to be starting next league, and this is the Explosive Trap Saboteur. Yes, that's right. With the brand new Saboteur, I still think this is a kick-ass build. So I have actually posted an updated path of building for this build on my previous video in this series, so I highly encourage you to check it out if you're interested in any way in this build because I think it is very strong for this upcoming league. Now, this is Explosive Trap Saboteur. He uses Leadership's Price, Devouring Diadem, and is very defensive focus with the current war is still going for grace and determination in a setup later on if you get an enlightenment things you can go as far as getting a determination banner in here too so this is like kind of an old school build in terms of how its defenses are layered or at least in terms of how the things have been getting nerfed or slowly pushed out of the meta it can still have all them but anyways this build because it's a trap focus build and the characteristics that come with traps is that you can stack damage like if you have some time before a boss say five seconds where they're doing rp like at the start of shaper 
you can get a stack of 15 traps, say, underneath the boss, and basically do a quarter of its life as soon as it triggers, and you can instant phase tons of bosses this way. It's just very useful in general. These builds really excel when you can have a bit of time to front load your damage, because it will obliterate anything in the area from the stack damage all at once. So with that in mind, how about we get some Atlas mechanics that work with that concept in mind? We can go things like Harvest, where for Harvest, you can throw a bunch of traps down, then click the plant, throw some more as they're spawning, and just blast through the first couple waves without any sort of problem. On top of that, we have Expedition, and Expedition, once again, we're setting up the explosives. It's very obvious where the next monsters are going to be, so we can pre-lay some traps for them, and as a result, just one-shot packs before they can even really get a chance to damage us. So once again, this mechanic, even though we're, say, not a super smooth mapper when we need to be clearing or picking up our Atlas nodes from being traps, you know, there's a bit of a delay from when you throw the traps or when your damage comes out. It's often seen as a less smooth playstyle compared to like a self-cast build, but thanks to picking these mechanics or farming strategies that mask that weakness and really highlight the strength again that front loaded damage one shotting a pack of monsters then that really highlights the strength of the build and it means that we're going to have a really we're going to be really effective at whatever strategy we pick so once again i've got essences i can lay a stack of traps and do a bunch of damage all at once so this is a really good mechanic to pick for a uh, trapper in general or a class that can pre-lay its damage and then I have some other odds and ends here, like Eater of Worlds or getting some extra map drops. I really like to take this early leak. So now that you've seen, so that that's an example of use picking Atlas tree mechanics that match your build and specifically highlight your build strengths and hide its weaknesses. And that's really useful because as a result, your league starter will always be very effective at making you currency like you're going to be well optimized at multiple layers and as a result you know path of exile it is a more multiplier so this is really i think one of the key things people miss out on when they're picking a league starter they get so focused on that thought of having the perfect build that they don't think of what they're actually going to do with said perfect build and if you can put that extra layer of thought and uh, you know apply some critical thinking to match your farming strategy to your build characteristics, then you're going to go far at League Start. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll be releasing part three of this series, how to have the best League Start every League Start in the coming days, and it's going to be talking about how to practice. Now you've got your build and farm strategy that matches it all planned out. So stick around for that. If you like the video, please leave a like. It means a lot. Have a great one. Take care.